Jared Poland, Frono's Photo. Com, and this is a new series called 30 for 30, where I do 30 rapid fire critiques in 30 days, 15 Adorama picks, and 15 Squarespace rapid fire critiques. If you want to see all of the rapid fire critiques in one place, go ahead, click up on the screen right now. We'll take you over to the website to do that, but let's get into a critique. Here we go. We have another Adorama Picks rapid fire critique of the 30 for 30 that I'm doing. But before we jump into that, if you haven't checked out Illuminized Metal Prints at Adorama Picks yet, I personally love using them. Use code PXMETFRO30 until September 30th of 2015 to get 30% off your entire metal print order. Think of that. If you spend 200 bucks, you're saving $60. All right, here we go. Let's get into this critique of Nicholas Glauser. So we have a landscape photo here that I like. I like the feel of the landscape photo. The only thing that's throwing me off are these weeds. Not, they're not weeds, but whatever they are in the water is throwing me off. Now, maybe that's a part of the scene. May, it says Lachschental, Lachschental, Lachschental. Maybe it's part of the image because that's a main feature of this area, but I don't know that. And one of the things I was thinking about was, would a creative crop make sense for an image like this? Would something like this make more sense? Now, you know that I'm not a big fan of cropping. I talk about that all the time. But I've also, I also understand that in certain situations, a creative crop, that you go into a situation knowing that, you know what? A panoramic crop is going to look better than the full frame aspect ratio that I'm shooting here. It just becomes the nature of the beast. Sometimes it works. Uh, and, and I'm perfectly fine with that if there's a, a thought out plan for doing it. But let me just say this. You should never have to crop a landscape. Well, very rarely should you. I can't say never, but you should rarely have to crop it because you have a lot of time to set it up. If you have a lot of time to set things up, you should get your composition right, and you shouldn't have to worry about it. So I do like this shot. I like the exposure. I like the I like I like the the, the editing. I just I'm curious about the, these reads and stuff like that. Moving on. All right. So we've got an interior shot. Uh, blah blah blah. 16 to 35. 17 to 40. Close. So you've got the 17 millimeter ultra wide, and it doesn't look too stretched out here a little bit. It does, but the lines are so beautifully straight. I like seeing this when it comes to, oh, geez, I just spotted it. I spotted the ocean. Did you spot it? It's like, find what's wrong in this picture. Well, this is what's wrong in this picture. I would get rid of, I mean, either turn this, well, you got to get another light up in there. So maybe they're staying in this room and this was just a test shot. Hotel de Rome. Uh, you know, I like the shot as a interior goes for real estate photos, awesome. Love the mirrors, love how this is split like this, but we need to get another light into here or take this light out. Uh, and also watch out for these cords and stuff like this running here. You, there, there may be a way to move the cord so you can still have the light on, but good shot overall, really like what's going on there. Oh man, I actually thought that was a ram up there. So what does this say? Saint Moritz, 24 to 105, 5D Mark III. So this is cool. You get the feel that you're super high up in the air uh, because you have this trammy car thingy that's taking you down the mountain, but you also have this ram up here, which I wonder what the ram's eye view would look like, though you don't want to fall off of it. It's okay. You know, the more I look at it, the more it's kind of like, maybe it's not as impressive as it would have seemed if this rock formation wasn't here. But again, this probably has something to do as a part of a photo story, but maybe one like this and then one shooting down these lines over here without the rock formation, maybe that would make a, a, cooler, a cooler picture as well. First thing I noticed here before I say anything else is that the, the lines are off. They're not straight. You can see it right here that they're not straight. You can also see it, watch. This will draw, you can see how it runs and it's not exactly straight. What lens is this? 17 to 40. You have to be very careful when you're shooting these wide angles. Something like this should be exactly in the center. And in this case, it doesn't feel like it's in the center and the angles are slightly off. Other than that, I like the long exposure. What, what were you shooting at? About 30 seconds at F22. To get the streets going by and to get no people in the image looks really cool. It's just, I love the color of the sky as well. Um, overall, I do like this image but maybe there's too much dead space here in the foreground that really doesn't lend well if it's the building and the stuff going by, but just get those lines straight. So we have another hotel room. 
Seehoff Davos. David Hasselhoff. Holy Jesus, I was like, this bed seems stretched out. Is that two, are, are those two queen size beds put next to each other to make one Jagunda size bed? Could be. This looks good. Some of the things that people are doing these days, they do stacked images, and Lightroom lets you do this now with uh, the HDR option, which I think is absolutely incredible when it comes to working with interiors. I've been doing it with houses lately. Is that not like having sex with houses, but actually uh, layering, stacking, if you if that makes sense. Anyway, a little too yellow. Warm that. Uh, take some warmth out of it. Split the difference, and I think you'll have a, a winning shot. But it looks good right there. Uh, Italian. This looks good. It's interesting how it's brighter here and it gets darker around the edges. 24 to 105 is getting, what are we shooting at, F4. Yeah, it's getting some uh, vignetting here. Now, they have lens corrections in Adobe Lightroom. They have the option where you click it and it does lens correction. What I've seen that that does is it gets rid of a lot of the vignetting and it straightens things out. I don't always like it for my images. I think 90% of the time I don't like it for my images, so I don't use it. I actually like the natural vignette that the lenses cause because it draws you into the frame. Now, in this case, I think it, it's detracting from the image, but I would try the lens correction option. So this is cool. Like, these smaller rooms are always hard to take a picture of if you're doing real estate stuff. And so to get the door frame and everything in the image, it frames the image, thus shooting through the door frame. It's a natural frame. And then it allows you to see into the room to get a feel of multi-dimensions. Photography is 2D. This gives it a three-dimensional look because we can process that this is the door. There must be some dimension here. Now, I wish this was a bookshelf. That would be even cooler. But nice shot. Nice nice job right there. This is okay. Doesn't grab me. Even right off the bat, I, it's like, eh. It's a sundown shot. Fine. Um, it looks like... We may be layering some images together. I can't really tell, but it's just not that impressive of a landscape shot. Gruyere's. Interesting. It's interesting with this w right here. I love the mountains in the distance. F45. Wow. F45 with the 518 and 1250th of a second ISO 100. I love the depth and dimension in the image. I love the way that the, 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 this is in a, di oh, wow, can you stop stuttering? I love the way that in the distance, you've, oh, look at these hills, look at these trees. I would love to walk up onto that hill to get shots, but this is really cool. The only things that, of course, that I think are distract, distracting are the people, which you don't have control of unless you got up slightly higher and then y use the frame a little higher to get rid of these people or waited till less people were there. This is cool. I don't know how I feel about the trees on the side, but again, I really, I actually, I will say that that causes nice dimension. You've got dimension here, dimension here, and dimension all the way there, even at four or five. So this is pretty scary looking. What are we at now? F9. So F9, we're seeing all of the shot. It looks all right. It's cool as a part of a photo story. It's, does it stand on its own? Yeah, I guess it could stand on its own. I, I can't tell you that it doesn't stand on its own. Thankfully, it, it's standing if you're going to walk on this because you don't want to fall over the ledge. It's a very interesting shot. It makes me fear, feel very tense. And, you know, sometimes we talk about images feeling tense and that being a bad thing. But in this case, if this image, image causes discomfort, it's because of the situation that it's in. It's on a cliff. You're going to fall off. If you fall off, you're done. So tension in an image like this, I think, works out. Uh, and that, I think, is the last image. So there's some really cool shots in this. Uh, uh, nice job with the exposures, with the processing. Didn't have to say much about the editing, which is I love seeing that the editing just works. So there's another 30 for 30. This is a flicker. Oh, well, sorry. It's an Adorama Pix rapid fire critique. Like I said at the beginning, if you haven't gone ahead and tried to make an Illuminized print yourself, Go ahead and do so. Use the code that's up on the screen right now to take advantage of that until September 30th, 2015, so that you can get 30% off of your entire metal order. That means if you just order one print, I believe a 24 by 36 is 189 bucks plus shipping, and shipping for the expedited may be seven or $12 in the US, you're saving more money. You spend 200 bucks, you're saving $60. You could get, almost get another print for that, or you could get another different size print for that. So go ahead, take advantage of that while you can. Thank you guys for watching. Jared, PolandFronosPhoto.com. See ya.
To check out all the videos from this 30 for 30 series, go ahead and click up on the screen right now. It's going to take you over to the post over on froknowsphoto.com where you can see all 30 posts once they are live.